you guys link up with R. Kelly, and it's now R. Kelly and public announcement, mm -hmm. and you guys are starting to do all these shows. And do the shows start getting pretty big? Actually, um, the first show we did, we performed two weeks before the album was released here in the States. We went to Europe. So we were over there two weeks doing nothing but shows. And every show over there was sold out. And when I say sold out, I mean like not even standing room. It's nothing that I don't think we've ever experienced. And um, it was so nice. The crowd was so loud that we couldn't hear the mix and the monitors. You know, And I mean, they had, and we kept telling them, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. They were screaming so loud. We couldn't hear the mix and the monitors. And there were people literally fainting passing out, being carried across the stage. That was two weeks of nothing but that almost every single night. And by the time we came here, the music was out. It was two weeks later. Um, and I know for me personally, I had no idea what it had done here, if, if it was going well, if it was going horrible. But overseas, it was a wrap. Okay. And at this point, in the early stages, how are you guys getting along with R. Kelly? Like, what, what are your relationships with him like? At that stage, it was great. No problems whatsoever. I mean, we're going, we're doing shows, we're figuring things out. Um, it got to the point where we were on shows, uh, switching routines and anything we wanted to do on prop. Just, you know, hey, turn around, give me this, 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 and this. All right, got it. And we could switch it up. It was, we were gelling, everything was fine. In the early, I would say, what, six months? Mm -hmm. No problems whatsoever. It was fine. It did start to change, though. <laughs> okay. And we'll we'll go ahead and get to that. <laughs> so so you guys are on tour with with R. Kelly, and you guys have I guess various tour buses. At that point, no, just one tour bus. Mm -hmm. One, yeah. Okay. And I guess Drea was one of the backup dancers. Right, a little further down the line. <clears throat> further down the line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. So I'm just trying to get the, the chronology here uh, in, in place. So initially, she was not a backup dancer. Well, no, she came in as a background dancer, but it was just a little later, you know what I'm saying, than the very beginning. She didn't start out with us, put it that way. Okay. She didn't kind of come along until like 12 play album. Okay. So did Aaliyah come around first? Um. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so you guys are on tour with R. Kelly and everything's blowing up. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing huge shows, things are crazy and so forth. Now, you know, before, the, before Aaliyah came around, um, you know, obviously you got a bunch of young men who are tasting fame for the first time. Mm -hmm. And you got a bunch of women who are going crazy over R&B. Right. <laughs> it's primarily a female art form in terms right. of like the audience. Right. What are some of the, the crazier things that are happening female-wise up to that point? <laughs> I'll let you take that. Well, for me, I can't speak on them. It got so bad. I was in a drought. Everything was, it was one of those things where everybody was around, but they were like, we were so busy. It was hard to actually reach out to women and say, hey, come meet me in my hotel room. Hey, do this, that, because everything was rush, 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 go, go, go. So if you really wanted that, you actually had to go, hey, make sure you give them my number. And you had to pass your number to somebody else on the team to get it to her. Because other than that, it was like, it was like you were royalty. You, everything was rushed. And I mean, literally, it was people putting their hands on you, moving you from one place to another everywhere you went. So for me, I was sitting there dry going, <clears throat> what, am, what am I going to do? Now, <laughs> the star over here, I can tell you about his business because it's right here in front of him. <laughs> <clears throat> you know that um, that thing about uh, Cinderella? So it's yeah, the male no version. It's the male about. version of Cinderella. You know, okay. always had to stay back and clean this and do this and that. Mm -hmm. I was Cinderella. This guy. Uh, when I say star. I mean... Vlad, imagine, you know, I heard, I know you heard stories of people on tour all the time. So imagine, you know, uh, an above average artist that is on tour above average, 
we were like probably 10 times that. So it was, you know, crazy everywhere we went. It was crazy. No, no, he was asking for specifics. So you need to say something, something that happened. Right. Just right. going to that. <laughs> well, Thought I'd help you out. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you know, girls, you know. Okay. I, I got a good story for you, Dan. Every Even when we first started out and we were doing club dates. And we would be like, you know, the bus would stay at the hotel and we'd be in like a, you know, a van. And after the show, it looked like a funeral going back to the hotel. <laughs> Nothing but cars. Nothing but ca- No, it did. You I know, know I know. Lying. It looked like a funeral. <laughs> and, and that's Long where, process. you know, it, it would go crazy. <laughs> I mean, at that point. <laughs> yeah. Some, somehow, some way, somebody gave out the number or the information of where we were staying, and it was, it was on. So, yeah, I do remember that. That was funny. There's a video. And let me know, because I can't quite figure out the, the time frame of it, but it's it's R. Kelly performing in a like a theater type venue. And I'm not sure if it's you guys or someone else holding up a sign that says 18 and over. Oh yeah. no, you know it's him. You know it was him. It was him holding the sign up. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know who it was. <laughs> it was him. As a matter of fact, before you actually ask your question, I remember us specifically. Getting those uniforms because, yeah, that's funny. We got those uniforms minutes before we actually hit the stage. They didn't have wardrobe for us. Guess who had those same uniforms on before us? High five. Okay. Not kidding. We put them on and went out there and performed. Done. Wasn't high five a kid's group? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So you guys put on high fives uniforms, and R. Kelly is performing, and you're holding up a sign that says 18 and over. That would be Dre. That would be yeah. Dre. Yes, and, this guy. Dre. And see, let me explain that, Vlad, because... <clears throat> Make it good. He was He was putting it in our brains as if, you know, he was older, of course, and the girls had to be 18 and over. So at that time... It, it felt right to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, eight, 18 and over, that's legal. Everything is good. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was me holding the sign. As crazy as that sounds. But it's true. You fast forward to 2019, and it looks pretty crazy. Right, it looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks crazy. It looks I mean, insane. In fact, <clears throat> I mean, because, yeah, 18 and over is kind of assumed by by adult males, but no one actually had a sign that right. said 18 and over. That, that right. was unique before and after. Right. No, that, that was that was a staple saying this is what it is. It was it was um pre uh, nonsense. It was letting you know that this is what it has to be. And big guy had the chance to hold a sign. As a matter of fact, I think we need to get another sign so you can hold that one in the show. We do not. <laughs> I mean, when you when you uh, saw that interview years later with uh, Tere, when he asked R. Kelly, "Are you still going to see teenagers?" <laughs> Define teenagers, right? And here you are holding what up the you, eighteen. Right. And You're holding up the teenage sign, right. essentially. And what's that crazy is I think I held that sign on Jay Leno's show too back there, the same sign. <sighs> okay. This is good. So at that point, were underage girls trying to get backstage and were trying to, to get in the mix and so forth? I would say, of, of course, you know, there there were young girls out there, but at the end of the day, I mean, it was like at the shows, nothing strange was happening. You know what I'm saying? I I never really seen no underage girls get backstage. There were always girls. Let's be clear. But underage girls, like like what the talk is now, I never seen that. Okay. And were there any signs that R. Kelly was into that at all? No. There were signs that he liked them young. You know what I'm saying? They looked a tad young a lot. You know what I'm saying? But nothing to the point that made me rise, raise an eyebrow like, you know, like, what is he doing? You know what I'm saying? Nothing to that degree. 
And one of the things that kind of came out later was that R. Kelly couldn't read. True. That's true. Did you guys do you guys knew that? Yeah, yeah. Cause you know, he had Yeah, to well, be, he was having problems. He had to be taught how to write she's got that vibe. You know, he couldn't he couldn't spell it. You know what I'm saying? So that was all real. We had limitations on what we could and couldn't write when we were all sitting signing. So Ooh. So so that was kind of his thing to write. We couldn't write She's Got That Vibe because he learned how to write that, and that was his thing to write. He didn't really ask you that. You could have held off, but okay. <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Was that a little weird, just dealing with a grown man who couldn't read and write? Extremely. It was extremely weird. Here's the thing. When you have the camaraderie that we had, which was a majority of the time just playful, and then, you know, there's people that are working for him, you know, management, assistant managers, road managers, you know. And then when you get that, it went from the four of us sitting in a room talking, working out things to management saying when he's left the room or it's just the three of us or they'll come to our room or whatever it is. I need you to not do this, not do this and not do this. And it's like. Dude didn't say that. Well, it doesn't matter what he said. I'm telling you this what needs to happen. So that was the part that actually was weird. You know, in the beginning, it was we were talking about whatever it was and we talk it out. And, you know, it wouldn't be a, a knockdown argument, but it came to the point where management was telling us was they were dictating. Do this. Don't do that. Do this, this, this. Don't do that. So that part, that was aggravating because they started. It went from being nice to now like a, a dictatorship, you know, mm -hmm. this, 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 this. Don't do it. Don't walk away. So. 